Yo. 2006 GMC Sierra, 1500 Silverado, same difference. Um, I just did shocks and an axle to this. I'm going to do uh, rear axle seals too and a brake job in the rear. These drums usually don't like to come off. Um, if you want, you can put some bolts in here. These are like 10 125s, I think. They might be 15s, I'm not sure. And just drive them in, it'll pull this drum out. I'm not going to bother to. I usually just use map gas. And I just heat up one spot of the drum to like 500 degrees and whack it with a hammer that usually pops right off. It should expand the drum just enough to get it off. And this is all full of gear oil. The pad's really thin, so I'm just going to replace it. I got this fan fangled item. You put it on the spring and tighten it down. And then I can get this spring off real easy. And these springs here, these are really not so much fun sometimes. I got this tool off the Snap-on truck a long time ago. I guess it's for some, it's some diesel tool for something. I don't know what, but I was just looking on the truck one day because I wanted to figure out what kind of tool I could use to get these springs on and off real easy. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to try this, whatever the heck it is. I don't even know what it is, but stuff comes out pretty easy and on pretty easy with this, this thing. I know the cars, it works great. Get these pieces off of here. And I'll get this this spring out that everybody loves to work with, I tell ya. I don't know who came up with this soulless piece of hell, but you can't get... There's no clip to get this arm off, so when you buy your shoes, this arm and this spring comes with it. And then right next to all of these rusty holes, you'll see your e-brake cables. It's just below the driver's side rear of the cab. All I do is I pull on this and I get a vice grip. I just lightly clamp this vice grip down and I can get this cable end off. And I can let the vice grip go. And then magically enough, the shoe just falls on the ground. Now I can turn this real slow and it just keeps turning and with um, with the regular differential what's happening is when I turn it I turn this side and it's going clockwise and the other side's going to go counterclockwise because the drive shaft's not moving and it's in park but if you turn this really fast you'll feel it lock in so that's telling me this has got a limited slip differential in it it's got an LSD in it, so I gotta put I gotta put a 7590 gear oil in it, and I gotta make sure that there's limited slip additive in it. And if it's not in the gear oil for limited slip or posi traction rear ends, then you gotta buy a little bottle of limited slip additive for this axle. Now I can go ahead and take all these differential cover bolts off and drain the fluid. It's a 13 millimeter. I already drained it like over the weekend, so I don't think anything's going to come out of here. I got to go put the transmission in neutral so I can turn the drive shaft on this thing. I need to turn this so I can get access to this pin bolt right here. I got a 6.8 millimeter I use for these because sometimes they like to strip out. They're not very tight, and they usually have a little bit of Loctite on them. This pin's not broke, which is a plus. If people like to abuse their rear differentials and like do neutral drops and stuff, this pin will shear off. I need to turn it down. I need to pull this pin out this way. I don't really want to turn this anymore. I have this in a position to where I can put everything back together and take it apart without turning anything else. Now I'm going to I'm going to push in the driver's side axle.
I'll push it in as far as I can and there's a clip in here. Oops. I'm just going to turn it and I'm going to get in here with a magnet and pop this clip out. Now that that clip's out, I can slide this axle right out. I usually just take a clean rag and while I'm pulling it out, I rag this thing off. There's my seal right there. That nasty bugger. Now when you get these out, you want to look at this surface. This surface right here, that's the bearing surface. You want to make sure it's not wore out and brennel. Because if it is, you're going to have to replace the whole shaft. And if it's brennel too, you got to replace the bearing. I'm going to get the seal out. That bearing actually looks really nice. I don't see any brennel surfaces on it, any pits or scores or anything. So, a lot of times these seals go bad because there's other problems. But it looks like this guy's going to get lucky. I pretty much knew that right away too because when you take the drum off, you can grab the hub and if it if you can pull it up and down, you know that that surface and that bearing is going to be all wore out. There's a couple different axles that come in these trucks. So you're going to want to make sure you got the right seal. I always just take it and just put it on the shaft before I put it in the vehicle just to make sure it fits. Most people don't do anything with these seals but just put them in. I got some, uh, some of this junk. It's really nasty stuff. I like to put a little bit of this on the axle seals because then I know they're not going to leak. It's just like extra insurance. You don't need a lot either, just a little bit. This stuff's pretty nasty too. It sticks to everything. Now when you do this, when you put this axle in, um, I always try not to turn the differential so I just try to wiggle it around and get it lined up in the hole and try to get it in the groove it don't like me there it goes Give it a little friendly persuasion. I probably didn't need to, but it fell in. I had a little minor issue with the spider gears moving around in this block. This axle shaft wasn't going in all the way because of that block right there. It was out of alignment. Now I can put this clip back in. And I gotta pull out on the axle. And there, it's in there. That's fun because this thing is uh, well I just had it in there and now it don't want to go there I just wiggled the axle back and forth a little bit just to get that in there just a little bit see it'll slide in all the way right now but uh, it's probably in my best interest To slide this out just enough to get that axle out and uh, I'm gonna hold this pin with like a I don't know a magnet or something in there put a little speaker magnet on there so it doesn't slide out anymore that way I won't run into that problem with the other side just do the same thing to the other side I have both axles in and now that that pin was in a little bit lining everything up man that made that axle go in a lot nicer so I'm gonna try to get this all the way in here just gonna kind of wiggle one of the axles back and forth a little bit to line everything up 
You don't want to force that in. If it doesn't want to fall in, don't force it. Get this pin in here. I'm going to turn it up a little bit so I can get access to that pin. You can Loctite these and clean everything and Loctite them if you want. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I never do. I don't know what the torque is on these. I can't imagine it's very much. I just take a hammer and just tap the thing on. That way I know it's locked in there really good. Now of course I must clean this ceiling surface really nice. Get as much of this gear oil out of here as I can. Get all the gasket material off this cover. This stuff doesn't want to scrape off like I want it to because there's impressions on here. So I'm going to put this on the wire wheel and clean it all off. Now that I got these surfaces clean enough, I'm going to take a rag and hit it with some brake cleaner. And just go around both surfaces on the axle and this cover a couple of times. I got a new, new tube of Ultra Gray I'm going to use for this. Actually, I have an old tube I might as well try to use up first. Just try to put about an eighth of an inch bead on here. Usually got about seven minutes to get this thing on here before this sealant starts to tack up. You don't want to smash this cover on here either. So what I do is I just put a bolt on the top. And I just start it without pushing on the cover. And I'm going to line all of these up and just start them all. Then I'll just snug them down a little bit. I like to start in the center and work my way out. And I'll just final torque them by hand. Well, from the looks of this, I can't imagine this plug's ever been off. It's pretty rusty. This is just a 3 a square. Well, I got a regular actual 3 a square that's made for plugs. A lot of people like to fill these until oil starts drooling out of the hole. I like to go about one inch below the hole because then you're below the axle tube and chances are it's not gonna leak as easy. So usually what I do is I just take a zip tie and I bend it and I can stick it down here for a measuring tool. This should be about a three quart system. I got a pump. I can actually pump this in here instead of squeezing a bottle. Nobody likes squeezing the bottle. I'm going to pound two quarts in here and then I'm going to check it. I'm right at about probably an inch and a half below the hole. So I'm going to put about another quarter of a quart in it and check it again. And that's about an inch below the hole. Put some thread tape on this. You should probably put this in by hand. Will I? No. Now for these brakes. I'm going to just scrape some spots where these contact surfaces are. Try to clean the rust off of them a little bit. Put some brake lube on them. And I just got to get this cable in here in such a way to where it latches in. See this button's got a, there's a spring right here that holds it in. 
We just got to pick in here and it should sit just like this and the spring should hold it up there. And I'm just going to try to stuff this up here. I got to pull this spring out of the way. So I got this all pulled in. I'm going to take a C vice grip. I'm going to put it there just to hold it in because it's pretty lame. And then this thing, I can just try to manhandle in there like that. That wheel cylinder almost felt like popping out. That's great. If you feel the need, you want to, might want to put a little anti-seize on these threads here. Try to get this irritating junk in here. Okay, I got that irritating junk put together. Rarely do these things need a hardware kit, so I didn't put one in it. There's a the stupid junk. It's working. Now I need to adjust this drum. You want it so it just barely drags on the pad. And it's really hard to tell because it's got that limited slip stuff, so you just gotta turn it really slow. It's still too loose. That feels pretty good. It's just barely touching. Now that I got my brakes put back together on this rusty old piece of crust, you want to take the brake drums back off. Because when you take them off, you can get these cables to pull out farther than they're supposed to go. So what I'm going to do is put a vice grip on here. I'm going to pull this out as far as I can with my, with my big bad muscles. And I'm just going to try to stretch it a little more by crimping this cable and pulling on it. And hopefully that's going to be enough for me to get this one on here. And it is. I don't know why exactly. There must be an adjustment somewhere for this, but these cables are actually a little too tight, so... I had to turn these adjusters down a little bit. Okay, bye.